Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Kelvin Hepner with Real Agriculture. We are on uh, the Tech Tour Live touring Western Canada along with one of our uh, featured speakers, Randy Dowdy, uh, record soybean and, and corn grower from, uh, from Georgia. And Randy, here we are, places like Saskatoon, Red Deer, talking about uh, how you have reached your, your record yields in corn and soybeans. And yet many of these concepts apply and, and questions that you ask when growing a crop also apply. Canola, wheat, pulse crops, crops that we grow up here in Western Canada. Absolutely. Um, the, the fundamental basics of any crop is that you want to capture all the potential that is expressed in that seed and, and through technology and genetics, we have to make sure that we're removing the limiting factors. And what are those limiting factors? Quite often, you know, it can be compaction and disease and herbicide and herbicide, lack of herbicide, you know, timing being done correctly, not controlling weeds, um, not getting that good stand, water. When we make big yields, we blame the weather. When we make poor yields, we blame the weather. It's not all the weather's fault. There's some things that's within our control. And some of the biggest things that I feel like farmers can apply to all crops is a nutrient component and that nutrient component is a big you know play in whether or not we capture that yield potential as well and and some of the questions that I challenge farmers to ask is you know how much of each nutrient does it take of uptake to make a bushel of whatever that crop is and are you meeting those needs quite often people focus on nitrogen phosphorus and potash but they're leaving out the fact that there's magnesium and calcium and you know sulfur and zinc and boron and manganese and you know iron and copper that must be met as well there's all the micronutrients and they're not paying attention to those things so how much of each one of those nutrients does it take to make a bushel of whatever crop they grow that's a question they need to be asking and then also you know it matters what's in the soil, but more importantly, it matters what's in the plant. And if they're not addressing what's in the plant, that's all that matters because it can be in the soil. Those nutrients can be in the soil, but not be in the plant. They can be tied up. So the only way that I know that that can happen is to pull tissue samples. When you pull tissue samples, we need to look at you know various things. And then some of those things are, you know, if everything comes back sufficient, is that good for a hundred bushel? for that particular crop or is that good for zero bushels or 75 bushels? What does sufficiency mean? And, and that's the part that has to be understood by, by everyone. So what are the levels that must be maintained in the plant at any particular point in that plant's life to, for the yield goals we covet? That's another question that needs to be answered. And we're trying to teach those people what those strategies are to understand that. Okay. So you mentioned uh, nutrient levels in the plant and in the, in the soil, weather. Uh, there are a lot of question marks, I think, on, on many farms in terms of, of the crop production year. Do you feel that there are, or obviously, this is a rhetorical question, you feel there are, don't need to be as many question marks that we can know instead of hope? I think that's one of your lines. Well, one of the biggest things that farmers do is they're, they're constantly hoping that they're gonna make the yields they covet. And they're hoping that they've done everything that it takes to make those yields. I'm a guy that likes to know. And examples of that, of hoping versus knowing, do we hope we're gonna make money this year or do we know we're gonna make money? Another example is that if you don't pull soil samples every year, do you know what's out there in the field? Or are you hoping what's out there in the field? If you pull them every two, three, four, and five years, are you hoping what's in the field is good enough for next year's crop or three years ago's crop based off the soil samples you pulled two to three years ago? So I'm a guy that likes to understand and know that I'm checking all the boxes going into it because I don't want to be the limiting factor and I don't want things that are in my control to be the limiting factor. So I encourage all farmers to know what's going on on their farm, not hope. Mm -hmm. And so that requires data collection. Absolutely. Data collection is huge. We've got to have data to make decisions. Um, part of that data collection process happens at the planter. You know, we're recording in that planting pass with the tractor with GPS. We're recording, you know, every time we do something in the field, we're recording GDUs. We're recording what we do, when we do it, how we do it. Um, we're, we're, we have data. And then when we harvest, we also have additional data. Uh, we're taking that harvest map then and overlaying it on a yield map, or a yield map over on a planting map, and then looking to see where yield's coming from. Okay, is it coming from a certain row spacing? Is it coming from a certain population? Is it coming from a certain hybrid? Is it coming from a soil test? When we overlay the yield maps on the soil test, okay, is it nitrogen or phosphorus or, or base saturation that, that we keep getting the high yields on? We look at the four or five areas in the field that make the highest yields, what do they have in common? We gotta have data to make decisions, and that's my way of knowing what we're doing, not hoping. You also talk about how uh, farmers, we generally know how to uh, weld and change the oil on our tractor, and uh, and maybe uh, 
know where to find the information on, on growing our crops, but, but often there are question marks and, and even things like how, how much nitrogen per acre is needed to, uh, or, or what's needed to produce a, a pound of, or a bushel of wheat, that sort of thing. Well, it goes back to the question I asked a moment ago. Yeah. Quite often farmers, when they make high yields, they blame the weather. When they make poor yields, they blame the weather. And farmers know how to weld, they know how to take and work on planters, they know how to set planters up, they know how to take and make sure they're operating appropriately, they know how to set combines, they know how to service their equipment, they know how to be mechanics, they know how to chase electrical problems, they know how to do a lot of things on the farm. But the thing that they don't know, when you start asking the questions that I've mentioned today, how much of each nutrient does it take to make a bushel of corn? What are the levels that must be maintained in the plant to, for the yield goals we covet? When you start asking them those questions, they know how to do a lot on the farm, but they don't know what it takes to raise the crops that they covet. What makes them more money? You Knowing how to weld, work on a combine, you know, be a mechanic, or bushels? Bushels is what makes you money. How can we not know? How can we not know as an industry, universities, and as farmers, all the components of what it takes to make yield, especially from a nutrient perspective. How can we not know that those boxes are checked? Because they are within our control. Mm -hmm. How can we not know those answers, but know how to do so much else on the farm when bushels is what really pays? So you are a first generation farmer. How much of that uh, do you think factors into why you have been able to do what you do? Well, I think it's important because I don't have any preconceived notions that there's only one way to do it and had anybody hold me back. Now, I made some elementary, pretty stupid mistakes along the way that was, that's been costly. We try to learn from them, but we don't have just a, you know, one way, one shoe, one size fits all, you know, kind of approach. We've had to learn. We've had to be a student of the crop. We've had to learn. We've tried to surround ourselves with smart people. I've got some people at home, Dr. Dewey Lee, that helped me get started. I've had some farmers that did share some information, but there's a lot of information that people won't share. And we've got to break that yoke also. I mean, if, if you're having success, you know, there's nothing wrong with sharing information. You know, quite often people are, have heard about and willing to go help people when they're in need and things like that. And, you know, they'll go help a farmer when there's a tragedy on the farm and they'll go help a farmer, you know, if somebody's dead or dying or there's a sickness or something like that, they'll help them get a crop in, they'll help them take a crop out. But quite often, if you ask them and there's nothing going on, they won't tell you anything. Does somebody have to die for you to be willing to help somebody? That's a problem, and that's a, a culture in Canada and America. Farmers don't like to share information, especially successful farmers, and I think we need to break that yoke. If I, I've had some pretty good success, God has blessed me, and we're thankful for that, and I give him the credit. But first and foremost, you know, I don't try to keep this cloak of secrecy around me, and I'm out to try to help people, and I practice what I preach. And that's why we're out speaking. That's why we go all over the place trying to teach people is there's nothing wrong with teaching people how to make higher yields. And farmers need to break that yoke. They need to take and, you know, it starts with them. And it starts one day at a time and at their level. And that, that yoke needs to be broke and share information. So if you're reaching 500 bushel corn, though, in, in Georgia and, and guys in Iowa all of a sudden are reaching 500 bushel corn, is there part of you that it would be concerned about that? Or are, I guess that also highlights how significant what it is that you have done reaching this this. Uh, level in uh, where you are in, in Georgia? Well, we always have the naysayers that say, well, if everybody makes 500 yeah. bushel of corn, we'll sell it for 50 cent. Let's face it, Jesus could tell some people what to do and they still wouldn't do it. So not everybody's going to implement the practices and take the time and the energy to make the yields that it takes. But in the meantime, I want to sell my 500. And I'm sure there's some farmers out there that do want to sell the 500. And that's the biggest thing is that, you know, you can't get lost in, you know, what's this going to do to commodities? You're assuming that everybody's going to do it. I feel like every time I go speak, you know, I feel like there's the 10 to 20 percenters. There's 10 to 20 percent. You got people that want to hear about change. You got people that want to talk about change. You got people that want to implement change. And, and the implementers are the 10 to 20 percenters. And, and those people will be the trend leaders, not the trend followers. And that's what we're looking for in the industry to change. And, and those people are the ones that want to make the 500. And I can assure you, um, we're not going to affect uh, the markets that fast. And, and I can assure you that if we have the supply, the demand hopefully will keep up by alternate uses. So finally then, Randy, uh, new growing season around the corner here. What do you do in terms of changing or improving in a, in a new year, or what, do you, what are your goals for, for a new planting season? Well, we've always made pretty good yields. God's blessed us. And when we make those big yields, you know, next year it seems like we don't do anything identical the way we did it last year. Um, and a lot of people say, Randy, you don't even use the same planter you used last year. I say, no, nah, we're trying something new. 
And, you know, when I got started, I was told that the land I farmed was only good for holding the world together and that 200 bushels was the cap and that, you know, I wouldn't ever make those yields. If I'd have listened to that and believed in it, you know, I wouldn't be where we are. So we, we're constantly pushing, we're constantly trying new things. The brain never shuts off. Unfortunately, that's good and bad. Um, the brain's always thinking about things that we can try next. Our next goals are to duplicate what we've done and maybe take it higher. We've seen higher yields on the yield maps and we've seen lower yields on the yield maps. We're trying to correct those problems and try to make it where every acre makes those big yields. That's what we're after. And that goes back to that whole data collection then because now you can duplicate in, in more areas than maybe somebody who doesn't measure progress along the way. That's the goal. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for taking the time to chat and thanks for joining us. Looking forward to the rest of the, the trip here, Randy. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Thank you for the opportunity.